like reaching his hand down and you're reaching up and grabbing and holding on and he's pulling you and then he lets go and then you, I mean, it's, all of this is happening. None of that is a special effect. None of that is like on a soundstage, none of it. We've all seen the hit action movie, True Lies, but do you really know the full behind the scenes story? You'll need to rewatch certain scenes with a keen eye to catch what was really happening. Behind the exciting stunts and humor was a darker side. Secrets that were kept hidden, controversies that caused lasting impacts. From injuries on the set to conflicts over controversial portrayals, there was more drama than meets the eye. Join us as we give you an inside scoop on the unbelievable true lies facts you've been missing all along. The Unplanned Fall. One of the most iconic scenes from True Lies features Jamie Lee Curtis performing a sultry striptease for her on-screen husband, Arnold Schwarzenegger. However, what many viewers might not know is that the routine had an unplanned mishap that director James Cameron kept in the final cut. While seductively dancing and removing pieces of her clothing, Curtis unexpectedly lost her footing and fell to the floor. This was not scripted or rehearsed. It was a genuine accident that happened during filming. But Curtis kept her poise and composure, continuing the striptease without missing a beat. Schwarzenegger's character of Harry Tasker visibly reacted with surprise at Curtis's fall, briefly sitting upright before relaxing back into the scene. This natural response was entirely unscripted as well, as Schwarzenegger had not been informed that Curtis planned to take an impromptu spill. His genuine startled double take sold the moment perfectly. Although some directors may have chosen to reshoot the scene, Cameron recognized that Curtis and Schwarzenegger's authentic, unvarnished reactions added to the humor and sensuality of the moment. He made the artistic decision to leave the footage intact, accidental fall and all. Tom Arnold's Divorce Joke Tom Arnold's portrayal of the witty sidekick Albert Gibson in the movie True Lies was a source of many laughs for the audience. However, one of the most memorable lines in the film was not part of the original script, but rather an impromptu addition by Arnold himself. The real-life marital problems he was experiencing at the time inspired this line. In one of the scenes, Gibson confides in Harry Tasker, played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, that he suspects his wife Helen is being unfaithful. During this conversation, Gibson shares an anecdote about his bitter divorce experience. He expresses his frustration over his ex-wife taking everything, even the ice cube trays from the freezer. Interestingly, this particular joke about the stolen ice cube trays was not in the script, but the product of Arnold's personal experience. At the time, Arnold was going through a public divorce from his then-wife, Roseanne Barr and rumors were rife that she had taken the ice cube trays from their home in a fit of spite. During filming, Arnold shared this story with the director James Cameron, who recognized its comedic potential and decided to incorporate it into the film. He even had Arnold deliver the line as part of the heart-to-heart -heart conversation between Gibson and Tasker. The quip perfectly captured Gibson's character. A cynical, emotionally damaged man still recovering from the wounds of a failed marriage. His resentment over such a trivial matter as the ice cube trays was a representation of the lingering bitterness that often accompanies divorce. Jamie's insisted helicopter stunt. When filming one of the most dangerous stunts in True Lies, Jamie Lee Curtis refused to use a stunt double and insisted on doing it herself. The scene involved Curtis dangling from a helicopter hovering high above the ocean. Even though a professional stunt performer could have easily taken her place, Curtis had other plans. As an actress known for her daring nature, Curtis outright insisted on doing the stunt herself when director James Cameron initially proposed using a double. Her rationale? If the famously risk-taking Cameron intended to put himself in harm's way by filming the sequence dangling from the open helicopter door, then Curtis should be equally committed as the performer being captured on camera. According to Curtis's own retelling, when she questioned where exactly Cameron planned to position himself during the daring aerial photography, he responded that he would be hanging from the helicopter's door to catch her coverage up close. This bold commitment from the director prompted Curtis to adopt the mindset of, if he's willing to go to those extremes, then so am I. 
To make the stunt even more challenging, Curtis insisted on performing it on her 36th birthday as a personal milestone. She spent weeks rehearsing every beat of the choreography, meticulously preparing her body and mind for the intense physical and mental demands of the helicopter rig work required. When the day finally came to execute the stunt, Curtis displayed remarkable poise and bravery despite the obvious dangers involved. As the helicopter rapidly accelerated to 70 miles per hour while pulling Curtis's body beyond the relative safety of the craft, the actress had to maintain unwavering calmness and precise form. Schwarzenegger's Tango Lessons While performing daring stunts and handling heavy artillery came naturally to the ultra-masculine Arnold Schwarzenegger, he faced an entirely different challenge in True Lies, mastering the sensual art of tango dancing. The film featured a pivotal scene where Schwarzenegger's character Harry Tasker had to convincingly tango with his wife Helen, played by Jamie Lee Curtis, as part of an undercover ruse. For the bodybuilder-turned-action star, training for this romantic dance sequence proved far more daunting than any of the hardcore stunt work or weapons handling required for the movie. Determined to sell the illusion of Harry as a smoldering, skilled dancer, Schwarzenegger committed himself to a grueling six-month regimen of tango lessons under the tutoring of professional instructors. He admittedly took inspiration from Al Pacino's critically lauded tango choreography in the drama Scent of a Woman just a couple years prior. Pacino's raw intensity and intricate footwork raised the bar for big-screen tango performances. Ever the competitive perfectionist when it came to his craft, Schwarzenegger viewed his upcoming dance scene as an opportunity to match, if not exceed, Pacino's tango mastery. The punishing training paid off, as Schwarzenegger's chemistry and precision with dance partner Curtis electrified their climactic tango routine. When Harry swept Helen into his chiseled arms and across the dance floor, the action icon's movements exuded a natural confidence and hard-bodied grace that belied the agonizing hours of preparation. Cameron's rewritten comedy. When James Cameron took on the task of directing the action comedy True Lies, he sought to inject a fair amount of humor into the film's high-octane espionage thrills. However, the initial attempts by outside writers to bring humor to the script proved to be underwhelming. Cameron was unhappy with their attempts at crafting jokes, so he decided to take the unconventional approach of rewriting the comedic material himself. Despite his reputation for creating gritty, dramatic films like Aliens and Terminator 2, Cameron displayed a surprisingly deft hand at incorporating comedic elements into True Lies characters and story. He went back to the drawing board, patching up much of the script's humorous dialogue and plot points to align with his own distinctive comedic sensibilities. In the end, only two minor jokes from the original writing team made it into Cameron's rewritten screenplay. This is a surprisingly small number, given the legendary director's limited experience in the comedy realm. One of those surviving wisecracks was Arnold Schwarzenegger's iconic You're Fired line, delivered while he launched a missile toward a hapless villain. For the vast majority of True Lies laughs, audiences were treated to Cameron's raw comedic voice. From Tom Arnold's profane improvisations to Jamie Lee Curtis's ability to balance glamour with self-deprecating pratfalls, the film's funniest moments emerged from Cameron's willingness to stray from convention. The $100,000 fighter jet rental. When it came to executing the ambitious aerial sequences in True Lies, director James Cameron refused to cut corners or settle for anything less than outstanding realism. This pursuit of authenticity led the production down an extraordinary path, renting not just one, but three authentic Marine Harrier fighter jets directly from the U.S. government. While securing cutting-edge military aircraft is no simple task, Cameron's team managed to work out a loan agreement that gave them full access to these impressive vehicles of war. However, facilitating such a high-stakes arrangement did not come cheap. The price tag to not only obtain the trio of Harriers, but also cover the costs of their expert military pilots rang in at a staggering $100,736. Breaking down the math, each hour of flight time for the cutting-edge jump jets cost the production company a premium rate of $2,410. 
the extravagant expenditure ultimately paid creative dividends, allowing Cameron to capture stunning in-flight footage of the Harriers soaring through the clouds at breakneck speeds. Seeing the real-life Delta-winged fighters flying gracefully yet lethally across the silver screen lent True Lies a level of spectacle that even the most sophisticated visual effects could have struggled to replicate convincingly. Charlton Heston's Marvel Inspiration When legendary actor Charlton Heston joined the cast of True Lies, he brought much more to the table than just his iconic gravitas and screen presence. Heston's character of Spencer Trilby, the by-the-book head of a secret government peacekeeping organization, drew direct inspiration from a famous comic book hero, Nick Fury of Marvel Comics fame. Just like the iconic Marvel spy leader, Trilby sported an eye patch over one eye and walked with the authoritative edge. More than just a surface-level visual nod, Trilby's entire purpose and backstory mirrored that of his four-color counterpart, Fury. Both men dedicated their lives to spearheading global anti-terrorist operations utilizing elite covert forces. Director James Cameron specifically modeled Trilby after Fury to create an instant entry point of familiarity for audiences. Movie fans may not have recognized the name Spencer Trilby, but Heston's gruff demeanor and imposing look signaled he was cut from the same cloth as Marvel's long-running super spy. In the world of true lies, Trilby heads up an organization known as Omega Sector, a clear stand-in for Fury's legendary outfits, Shield and Strike. Like the comic book counterpart that inspired him, Trilby commands an army of highly trained field agents who specialize in insinuating undercover and neutralizing global threats. The Grenade's Missing Backstory One of the most mysterious loose threads left unanswered in True Lies is where exactly Harry Tasker got the grenades he uses during the movie's climactic terrorist showdown. While grenades certainly aren't uncommon for a super spy like Tasker, this particular explosive device has an intriguing backstory that never made it to the final cut. As originally planned, the pivotal grenade that Tasker uses to take out a group of bad guys was supposed to have a more elaborate introduction tied to a deleted scene. This cut scene showed the movie's sultry femme fatale, Juno Skinner, forcibly putting the grenade between the legs of Tasker's unsuspecting wife Helen during an earlier kidnapping attempt. With both women's lives at risk, the cool-headed Skinner menacingly tells the captive Helen that all she needs to do is keep her legs tightly closed to avoid accidentally triggering the explosive tucked in her underwear. Ever defiant, Helen responds to the threat with one of her trademark snarky remarks about Skinner likely having more first-hand experience with that situation. After eventually escaping, Harry gets the still-armed grenade back from his wife, using her diamond earring to carefully re-pin the trigger mechanism. This resourceful move allows Harry to easily throw the explosive later on as an improvised weapon against the terrorist forces. While ultimately removed for pacing, the original setup would have added extra dramatic irony to Harry's climactic grenade toss. Without the deleted scene's context, Harry's sudden skill with the grenade toward the movie's conclusion comes across as somewhat abrupt, a logical gap in an otherwise tight plot. Fox's fight over Tom Arnold. Tom Arnold's scene-stealing turn as the goofy sidekick Albert Gibson in True Lies very nearly didn't happen. In fact, the production experienced considerable pushback from the studio 20th Century Fox over Arnold's involvement. At the time, Arnold's public perception was still reeling from his messy divorce proceedings with comedian Roseanne Barr. The tabloid-ready split, rife with allegations of infidelity and legal squabbles, had turned Arnold into a controversial figure in Hollywood. Fox executives were understandably apprehensive about bringing such a lightning rod of negative publicity into one of their major tentpole releases. However, director James Cameron refused to back down from casting his top choice for the laughable supporting role. The filmmaker felt Arnold's energetic style and improvisational skills would provide the perfect funny contrast to Arnold Schwarzenegger's serious lead performance. Cameron advocated so strongly for Arnold that he was willing to take the project to another studio if Fox denied his casting request. Faced with losing their high-profile director over the matter, 
Fox gave in and granted Cameron's wish to have Arnold join the True Lies cast. This turned out to be a wise decision, as Arnold's wild comedic talents and great chemistry with Schwarzenegger became highlights praised by critics and audiences upon the film's release. Had Fox stuck to their original objections over Arnold's personal life controversies, True Lies may have sorely lacked one of its most memorable and quotable supporting turns. Eliza Dushku's Stunt Injury Allegations In the years following the release of True Lies, disturbing allegations emerged from actress Eliza Dushku regarding her treatment as a child performer on the film's set. Dushku, who played the daughter of Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jamie Lee Curtis's characters, claimed she was the victim of inappropriate behavior and sustained injuries due to negligence. Specifically, Dushku stated that at age 12, she was confronted with flagrant sexual remarks from an unnamed stunt coordinator affiliated with the production. The severity of these alleged comments led to her parents initiating legal action, as well as substantive monetary compensation being paid out by the studio. Compounding matters, Dushku also alleged suffering physical wounds when rigging meant to safeguard her during a dangerous stunt sequence failed to operate correctly. She reportedly struck her ribs against a boxing platform after being thrown clear during filming. While largely avoiding the spotlight in subsequent decades, Dushku's resurfaced claims in the hashtag MeToo era cast an unflattering light on the purported lack of proper oversight and accountability standards in place on big-budget Hollywood productions of the era, particularly those involving underage talent in hazardous scenarios. 9-11 derailing the sequel. While True Lies was a massive critical and commercial hit in 1994, plans for a highly anticipated sequel ultimately derailed in the aftermath of the 9-11's terrorist attacks. The original film's blend of explosive action and terrorism plots proved too sensitive a subject matter in the years immediately following the national tragedy. Both director James Cameron and star Arnold Schwarzenegger were initially on board to reunite for A True Lies 2 that would have picked up the story of spy Harry Tasker and his wife Helen in the late 90s. The creative team spent years developing a script that doubled down on the first movie's audacious set pieces and raised the stakes to a global level. However, as the 9-11 events unfolded and ushered in a period of heightened fears around acts of extremism, the inappropriateness of a blockbuster action movie treating terrorism so lightly became clear. Despite the financial appeal, Cameron realized that making light of such a serious subject matter would likely come across as deeply insensitive in the years closest to the national crisis. In the early 2000s climate where even routine air travel had become psychologically difficult for many Americans, a sequel that involved Harry going up against Middle Eastern villains and their attack plots simply did not align with the public mindset. The comedic tone meant to balance out True Lies violence and destruction felt too out of touch. Arnold's onset brush with death. During the production of True Lies, Arnold Schwarzenegger faced a terrifyingly close brush with death that could have ended in tragedy. The brutal incident occurred while filming a climactic action sequence involving a large passenger jet on an Air Force Base runway. As cameras rolled, Schwarzenegger's character was meant to hitch a ride on the exterior of the taxiing airplane as it gathered speed for takeoff. However, an alarming lapse in communication between the stunt team and the actual pilots operating the aircraft nearly proved catastrophic. Thinking Schwarzenegger had received a signal to detach from the plane before it took off, the pilots increased the jet's engines to full power, with the muscular action star still holding onto the fuselage. Within seconds, the plane's immense force propelled it, speeding down the runway at over 120 miles per hour. Only Schwarzenegger's quick reflexes allowed him to hastily disconnect his safety tether just in time and tumble free from the accelerating jet before it left the ground. Had he remained tethered just moments longer, the intense forces and wind could have easily smashed him against the runway or into the craft's engines. In recounting the heart-stopping close call, Schwarzenegger cited it as one of the most terrifying experiences of his entire action career, full of choreographed mayhem and daring stunts. Miraculously avoiding serious injury or worse, 
The heroic muscle icon lived to promote True Lies Another Day, the forgotten video game. The multimedia extension of True Lies, which was a popular movie in the 90s, is a video game that is now lost in time. The game was released in 1994 to capitalize on the success of the film. It allowed players to play as Harry Tasker and undertake original espionage missions in various parts of the world, using an array of weapons and gadgets to fight terrorists. Despite being an officially licensed property developed by the renowned game studio Pandemic Studios, the True Lies video game failed to make a significant commercial impact upon its initial release for the Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, and PC platforms. It quickly faded from public view, overshadowed by more popular movie tie-in games of the time. Over the years, the forgotten True Lies game has become a cult classic among retro gaming collectors. However, many fans of the original James Cameron classic are unaware of its existence. Those who have found copies of the game have often criticized its mediocre quality and generic aesthetic that lacks the movie's vibrant visual panache. Arabic Backlash to Portrayal True Lies' portrayal of Arab and Middle Eastern characters as terrorist villains drew significant backlash and criticism upon its release. While the over-the-top action movie was never intended as a serious look at geopolitics, its careless use of harmful stereotypes struck a nerve with advocates for more nuanced cultural representation in Hollywood. At the center of the controversy stood Art Malik's performance as the over-the-top antagonist Salim Abu Aziz, the fanatical leader of a militant sleeper cell plotting devastating attacks. Malik fully leaned into exaggerated mannerisms and accented English meant to immediately depict his character as an ominous Arab other in a post-Gulf War climate of heightened prejudice. Despite being of Pakistani descent himself, Malik drew criticism for promoting stereotypes that portrayed the diverse ethnic identities and beliefs across the Middle East as a single, violent caricature. Critics said true lies carelessly increased irrational fears and bias against minority groups. The debates around Malik's performance sparked a larger discussion about how Hollywood portrays Arab and Muslim characters. Many argue that Hollywood relies on oversimplified and harmful stereotypes when depicting these characters. While true lies existed in an over-the-top fantasy realm, its uneven depiction of an entire region's population as Islamic extremists had real-world impacts in an era of rising hate crimes. The extended bathroom brawl, one of the most intense action scenes in True Lies, is the bathroom fight between Harry Tasker and a group of terrorist goons. What appears in the movie as a relatively short scuffle was originally planned as an epic multi-minute brawl. The ambitious plan called for an extended, realistic fight choreographed by legendary stunt coordinator Benny Dobbins. The over-the-top sequence would have shown Harry single-handedly taking on nearly a dozen heavily armed assailants in a public restroom. Using improvised weapons like toilet plungers and breaking porcelain fixtures, he would systematically disable each foe in a graphic, violent fashion. Dobbins envisioned capturing the lengthy fight from multiple angles using advanced camera rigs and choreography requiring intense rehearsals. Ultimately, the grandiose plan was scaled back due to concerns over the sequence's escalating violence and complexity becoming excessive. While still thrilling, the abridged version loses some of the intended satisfaction of watching Harry overcome such impossible odds through sheer determination.